Do you read Stephen King? Good news, there's a club for you, the Losers Club. Every Friday, us losers journey through the never-ending wastelands of King's Dominion. We sink our teeth into each of King's novels, dive deep into the lore, and review every adaptation. Even better, we're always having guests over. Thomas Jane, Will Wheaton, Mary Lambert, Mick Garris, the list goes on. So what are you waiting for? Join us as we read on through long days and pleasant nights. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... It's an interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. If you're not already a subscriber to the series, please take the moment and hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening from. You can do that at Spotify, at YouTube, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your favorite podcasts from. We put out multiple interviews every single week, usually on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, and uh, would love to keep you up to date. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest is Danny Harrison. A couple years ago, he released uh, the first album under his uh, his own name after spending uh, the last part of the you know 15 years doing the new number two. And while he's not exactly ready to follow up that solo debut with a sophomore record, he has given us a song, a brand new song called Motorways Erase It, and Danny and I are going to be talking about where that track came from and what to expect next after it. We're also going to talk about touring with ELO, which the band's out right now doing that, and his history with Jeff Lynn. Of course, it goes all the way back to his own childhood and all the scoring he's been doing. He's been scoring so much music for documentaries and movies, and there's a lot of talk about the intersection between that part of his life and the pop music part of his life. And we'll also hear about some of those other projects he's been a part of, like he's on the new Perry Farrell record, he's on the new Uncle record, and it's been 10 years since he did Fistful of Mercy with Ben Harper and Joseph Arthur. I'd say it's high time for a sequel to that. Will it happen? Check out the interview. It's Kyle Meredith with Danny Harrison. Oh, Kyle, this is Danny. We have been loving the uh, the new single um, w- with Motorways Erase It, and I, I want to get into talking about that here in just a few moments, but I thought maybe we start with the present and work our way backwards because you've been on this uh, summer tour with ELO, and, and how's that been going? It's been going fantastic. I mean, we just got to Grand Rapids. We've got five minutes to go to the comic book store, and now we're going to get ready for sound check. So standard day. Yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. You know, like I've, Jeff and I have obviously been friends for... Since I was about eight or six, it really is just such an honor to get to be taken on the road with ELO. I mean, I've just grown up loving ELO. And to come and do arenas with them every night is, is ridiculous. And, and, I mean, I've, re- I've read about you talking about how, you know, ELO it was like your first concert. You ended up inducting them into the Hall of Fame. But I, you know, I, I, So I know there's the personal relationship, but I, I've got to feel it's seeing ELO every night seems to be like it would be a master class in, in melody and songwriting. Fortunately, when I was a kid, I was there when they did Cloud Nine. So that was the first time my dad and Jeff worked together. And then after that, I got to see sort of behind the curtain, really, because I saw I saw him do Full Moon Fever and Mystery Girl and the, both the Traveling Wilburys albums. And, you know, they mixed the Traveling Wilburys records at, at my house, which is the studio that I still use. So it's, you know, uh, knowing that equipment, being taught that equipment that I still use today that was taught to me by Dad and Jeff. It's funny, it does come full circle, you know, and it's like, it's one thing playing with Jeff, I've played with him before and to Tom Petty, but going out with my band and supporting them, it does feel like we've got to a different place in our lives. Well, I'm um, very envious on the folks who've been able to see that so far. Every night, night after night, it's just been a great show. The ELO camp, they just keep churning out amazing performances. Well, I will say uh, I've, uh, I did get to at least see you live in a different sense. I, I recently watched the, um, you know, the full film concert that you posted with In Live. The In Parallel performed live. And it is, it is beautiful. I mean, those songs, hearing them, I, I read, I think you said somewhere that a record's not finished until you play it from start to finish. And I thought, well, just in the nick of time. That you <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's one of those things where I, because I, I do a lot of soundtracks and things 
you know, you, you kind of send them off into the night and then you never really get to live with them as a record. It's, uh, they, or they just, you, you know, you have to watch the movie to hear it. I like to perform everything. So, like, if we do a movie soundtrack, I'll perform it from start to finish. And, I mean, it's kind of like what Hans Zimmer started doing with all of his catalogue, you know, and you see Danny Elfman does it with, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas and with the Tim Burton stuff. So it's a really good way of kind of uh, bookending a scoring project is just to get to do a live concert. And I feel like the in parallel felt a lot more to me like kind of a long trip that I'd been on rather than a group, a sort of a band project, you know? So it was good to do it like with all the original players and with strings, you know, there's about 17 people. It's actually more like ELO. <laughs> <laughs> the, amount, the amount of numbers of people that we had up there. It's funny. Yeah, I and mean, in parallel was the first time you know you, you finally put your own name on the stamp. You know it wasn't the new number two or anything like that. Have you found that that's given you a, a musical direction? No, I think you know the reason I stopped doing the new number two is we were in we were in the middle of uh, our second record and we got an opportunity to score a big Hollywood movie and we kind of pivoted because three of the people at the time who were in the band all really you know were composers as well. So we thought, okay, let's do that. And then it, then we went through a sort of period of it was a bit confusing us doing composing because a lot of bands had sort of been given bad rap for not finishing projects, if you know what I mean. Mm. There was a lot of films that were kind of walked away from and there was a trend towards bands scoring films. And then the kind of the trend went away from that because of a few big films that were left incomplete. And I won't say which films or which people, um, but, you know, after that, it was kind of hard to get scoring work as the new number two. So I started composing a lot of different things by myself and Paul Hicks as well. So we decided to just be Danny Harrison and Paul Hicks, you know, because he'd already produced a lot under his name and I'd produced uh, records under my name. So it was, um, yeah, it was sort of more of a choice just for, for clarity's sake. And then I did that whole album my solo album as I did it all by myself just kind of on a laptop and traveling around so by that point it wasn't really uh it, it just made sense not to call it a new number two record so yeah now I'm doing solo records well and you've got the, the dual life as you're talking about with with the scoring does one give you relief for the other I mean I, I would think like coming back to pop music you know for for what you do on, on these records like Man, at least there's a chorus I can crutch on every now and then. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess we're, yeah, you get a lot more you get a lot more choruses and guitar solos when you're making your own music. But, you know, I mean, we I, I kind of just try and play off play off each other really, let them play off each other because if you've got like for example, you just done like three or four really big documentary project from the Shepherd Ferry Obey Giant to the Maya Matangi uh, documentary to the case against Adnan Syed, which was an HBO show, mm -hmm. and then um, another project that's not announced yet, and we just finished doing Cutthroat City, which was the film directed by Riza. So we've just been in a studio for about a year now, not just churning out. The only time I've left is to go on tour with my previous tour. So it's kind of nice to get out onto the road, but as soon as you're out and you've done a month, you're ready to go back in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, it's not like you draw a line in the sand, though. I mean, these cinematic sounds do find their way into, you know, what, I, what I'll just generically call pop songs. Because, like, motorways, like, it's in there. It's not, you know, you can oh, yeah, hear those yeah, cinematic no. sounds and everything. I like to do when you're making soundtracks you spend so much time kind of farming synthesizer sounds you know just like sitting around looking and trying and listening to all kinds of sample packs and you know new buying all the new stuff and just trying to use it until you've got something that sounds original and not just like everything else that's out there because there's so such a tendency for people to not want to sound influenced by something they actually want to sound exactly like it it's a, it's a sort of trend in in soundtracks you just hear so many things sounding so similar and you know so we spend a lot of time growing and farming our synthesizer sounds and uh when when you find stuff that doesn't get used and and that, that's the stuff that you love the most that's that's always a great problem to have because then you go okay i'm putting this in my secret box <laughs> And when you get done with it, you now when you get done with like four or five projects, you go back to your secret box and it's got really cool stuff in it. And you're like, okay, great. What, this is a good jumping off point. And then if you've got some songs as well, then that's a good kind of cross starting point. Well, I'll say, you know, not only have we enjoyed this new single with Motorways Erase It, but of course the video with the flying dog all the way around the world. I, I noticed, though, 
you know, one of the other documentaries I think that you did some uh, scoring for was Dogs on Netflix, and I thought, yeah, what's Netflix going dogs. on here? Yeah, I don't write songs unless they've got dogs in them these <laughs> days. I, I will not work. It's in my contract. Yeah, there has to be at least one dog per project. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'm not, I'm not, I'm out. Otherwise, I'm out. There's actually a, a wolf, a big wolf on tour with us here. Oh. Who, he drives one of the trucks every night. I see him sitting in the driver's seat of one of these trucks. He's a huge, big wolf. So, that you know, you see, it's my, I'm still not in breach of my contract. I've still got the dogs on the road. Um, no, I, I, um, I was chatting with Liam Lynch, and um, we just wanted to do something fun, you know. And we are saying, like, every, everything was so heavy last year. And what, what do we love more than anything? Dogs on the Internet. Why not? And I also, I was also obsessed with those videos of like uh, Emperor Palpatine spinning through space to the sound of shooting stars and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, the kind of standard Star Wars Jedi Council memes where they're like flying through space. All that sort of stuff, you know. Dog memes. Who doesn't love them? <laughs> we actually got reposted by doggos being doggos. So I was very, you know, I felt like I've made it, you know, in my career. <laughs> Well, you know, as it goes all the way around the world and hearing you talk about, you know, the concept of, of places that you have gone throughout it, and you mentioned Antarctica very quickly. Did you go to Antarctica, and what were you doing there? A bunch of us went a year and a half ago now. We went on an expedi expedition down there for two weeks just towards the, the south end of the Antarctic Peninsula, and it's a very interesting place. I recommend everyone checks it out. It's far out, literally far out, <laughs> and uh, yeah. And, and not as cold as you might think. And I think it was colder in it was colder in New England when we were there than it was in Antarctica. <laughs> Well, I might be trying to uh, to um, connect things that aren't exactly there, but, you know, the, I think there's an environmental uh, concept when you say it's not as cold as you would think it'd be, and, and hearing you talk about motorways as a song as an example of how the future will be, and I thought, I, I wonder if oh, that all yeah. connects. Well, I mean, I think, I think that's just an underlying sort of anxiety on everyone's brain, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean... You know, I, I'd, I'd done some shows the other month in uh, in London for the band Uncle, who is I, who I love, and um, uh, with a previous singer from one of our albums, the girl Leela Moss from the Duke Spirit, and yeah, we'd done a uh, a couple songs on the new Uncle record, and it just took you know what combined with the uh, the Extinction Rebellion uh, protests that were going on in London, which I think are really good, and I think that you know they're doing a civil disobedience in order to, to make a point to governments that they have to change. I think it's a really good model, but it did bring everything to a standstill for a very long time. And so it was just kind of quite pertinent that we were stuck on a motorway with people protesting on the motorway at the same time. And, you know, I always just think of that Banksy painting that they did on that bit of M4, which just said, it's not a race. <laughs> And it was a rat, like a rat painting it, not a race. I, I mean, but yeah, you know, going around the planet this year, uh, around the world, it's been interesting. I've done a lot of traveling and I've seen a lot of different perspectives on things. Uh, if everybody could travel that much, it, the whole world would be a different place. It is. And it's very much, I think people are being very much sort of herded into their bubbles, you know, and it's everything from your news feed to just the way that search engines work and the way that your search bubble is. It's like you're not really going to see anything outside of that ever again now unless you get out and travel and meet people and have conversations and read books. We can only hope. I know. Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. Yeah, um, because I find, I find myself getting terribly sucked into my phone, especially all the waiting around that happens on, on tour. That was the great thing about Antarctica was that there's no communication with anyone down there. So having two weeks where you just stare at icebergs instead of billboards right. is, uh, was very liberating on my, my neural pathways. <laughs> you know, like you really you have different thoughts and you have different dreams. You mentioned being on the new Uncle record. You're also on the new Perry Farrell record, too, which uh, I, I'm in love with. He was on oh, my yeah. show not long ago. And, and you also share Stephen yeah, Perkins, Perry. right? Stephen and I are good friends. Yeah, Stephen was in the live performance of In Paral and Parallel. He was, he was in this sort of extended squad. He came and did all this wonderful percussion for me. But we, we just toured together in his other band, Summer Moon, which was Nikolai from The Strokes. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, Stephen and I are great friends. He's, he's a real sweet guy. Well, I love the work that you've done, you know, with him and, and, and with Perry. And I'll, I'll also say, one of my friends is, is Joseph Arthur. We go back oh, a long I love way. Joe. Yeah, and um, I was texting with him earlier. As, as was I today. <laughs> I, I, and, you know, next year is going to be 10 years since you all did the Fistful of Mercy record. And, um, you are 
kidding me? It's ten years, and you're sort you all. Ten years, fistful of mercy next year. It's what? it's time. That is that is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I never ever thought that that was ten years. I'd say seven. Wow. Yeah. No, that's uh. Okay, well. It's it's time for that next one to come. A lot of us are like, we come better, on. Yeah, we better get our shit together then. <laughs> I hope so, man. I, I love what you guys did uh, there. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I, we we did an extra track. We actually started on the second record. And we had everyone everyone back in with Jim Keltner and everyone. Uh, and we did a track. And then we couldn't finish the rest of the record that week. And then that was five years ago now. So. <laughs> so there is actually a start on the next record. But, yeah, but it, it kind of ground to a halt because everyone's so busy. Right. And I saw Ben just put out a lovely release the other day. Mm-hmm. I saw him playing with Mavis Staples, I think. Right now, that's what he's doing. Well, well, you know, if you're, if there's no better time to release something than on an anniversary like that. So, you know, maybe yeah, uh, you're right. Well, maybe the fist has to come back then. I always wanted to call the second record for a few mercies more. <laughs> so you've already, you're already started. You've got it. You see, it was, and I said, I'm not doing Fistful of Mercy unless we can call the second record. The whole name of the band has to change. <laughs> not Fistful of Mercy. It's now called For a Few Mercies More. <laughs> Well, yeah. Hopefully, we'll hear that. Uh, I look forward to you know. I, I know you know the new record that, that Motorways is sort of a one-off right now, but I do hope it leads to another full length as well because we certainly yeah, we love plan, what you do. I plan to do another release at BMG in the fall, hopefully, and I'll try and get around to doing that Fistful of Mercy <laughs> record in between that and all of the rest of the movies and things that we're doing. It's been pretty busy this last year, but I I can't complain. I I like being very busy. Awesome. We'll be listening regardless of what you send us. Well, thank you very much for your support, and thanks for playing the song out there. And um, hope you can catch one of these shows with ELO. And if not, then I'm sure they'll film one of them or two of them or something. But uh, thank you for all your support. Awesome, Danny. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Big thanks. Danny Harrison. Uh, The latest single is called Motorways Erase It. And as you heard... I think we can look for a a sophomore uh, solo album in the fall. Really looking forward to that. In the meantime, I hope you've subscribed to the series. Before you get out of here, anywhere you get your favorite podcast from, you can hit that subscribe button. That includes iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. And once you do subscribe and uh, and, and you're a regular whatever, uh, give us a hi, hello in the comments section, uh, or, or let us know what you liked about the interview. Tell us where you're listening from and give the series a rating. That is a huge help. And after that, you can head to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. It's called the Kyle Meredith with Radio Show, and I play brand new tracks from the day, some anniversary spins, music news, and clips from these interviews as well. And you can find bonus interviews at WFPK.org. Consequenceofsound.net has your music and film news. You can also find me at Twitter, at Kyle Meredith, and Facebook slash Kyle Meredith. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.